Hi everybody. So today I'm going to test and swatch uh, a bunch of white mark making tools. So I've got markers, um, pens, pencils, ink, correction fluid, and I'm just going to see which ones work best for me. I've got some favorites, but I've also got some new things that I haven't tried out. And so I'm going to go through all of these and show you what I think of them. Uh, so I'm going to swatch all of these items on um, both on black cardstock, which that one's got messed up, on black cardstock, and then in my swatch book. I've also put down black gesso, and then sometimes when we're making marks, we're, we're wanting white lines or white marks, um, not necessarily on a black background. So I've got a sample collage over here, and I'll also be uh, making some white marks on different colored papers. So let's get started. And first of all, I'm going to show you uh, a brand new to me uh, from the Sharpie Creative Marker Collection. Uh, unlike, and you'll, you'll see these as well, unlike the Posca paint markers, the Sharpie Creative Markers, they say you don't need to prime them. They're ready to go. So this is a white marker, and I am going to just make some marks on black cardstock. And you can see this is, it's not, it's not fabulous it, it, as far as coverage goes. Uh, I should probably do color it in. So you can, you can still see uh, the strokes when I, when I put something like that. So I'm, it's not something I'm going to uh, color in uh, a solid color square with that Sharpie. Uh, so I'm also going to make some marks over here uh, in my swatch book on the black gesso. That works okay. Uh, I left some space between these black marks. I'll go back and write in what, what marker I used. And then let me try this on, on an actual collage. So if I wanted to outline it's a fairly thick tip. Like I said, you don't have to prime it. You don't have to shake it. Um, the jury's still out on that one, I think. And next up, well, might as well compare the, the, the crowd favorite, the Posca paint pen. Now, Posca paint pen, you do need to shake it. You do need to prime your tip. Uh, especially when you first get it, you want to uh, press that down until the paint starts flowing. And so this is the Posca paint pen. It probably needs to be primed a little bit more. And some dots. This, you can see, is fading. It's kind of being sucked up by the um, by the cardstock. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to do it on the black gesso as well. Just do some marks and then we'll see how this looks on on this collage on a colored background. All right so that is the Posca paint pen and they come in all different uh, thicknesses, different nib sizes. I'll see if I've got another one here. Maybe I don't. Oh, here's, a, here's a skinnier one. This is uh, 3M. This is 1. So we'll get that going. Okay and right away I just want to point out there's a difference here between this bullet tip and this, which actually has the metal tip that you might probably used to seeing in a, in a gel pen. So let me shake this one up, 
get it primed and I'll do my my marks here this is definitely thinner marks Try it on the black card stock. A little more priming. Very small dots. Very small. And yeah, not real impressive. And then I'm going to just do a, a mark here for. For the sake of continuity, I'll do a mark on, on the collage, a little outlining. Okay, so that's the very skinny Posca marker. They also make them with a really jumbo nib. Uh, I don't have one around um, this morning, but I do have some Sharpie uh, paint pens. This one's oil-based, so if you're used to acrylics, this is going to be uh, a little bit different experience. And again, it's got to be shaken up and primed. This one's been sitting around for a while. So I'm uh, off camera, I'm, I'm kind of priming these. And you can see this nib is kind of a mess. So we'll see if this even works. Um, you can see it almost evaporates as it goes down. This is an older uh, oil paint pen, and you can see it's it's not holding up real well. Do it on the on the gesso as well. We'll see how that dries. All right, so that's the Sharpie brand. Um, here's another Sharpie brand. This is also oil with a smaller nib. We'll see if this one. If this one works, and I just have, I just have a little post-it over here. I'm just pressing until the paint starts flowing. As you can see, a lot of oil is coming out of this one. It's an oil-based pen that I haven't used in a while, and I'm not really seeing the paint start to come out here. Yeah, we may. We may just toss that one in the trash. Let's move on. Um, some others. One of my favorite things I found are these whiteout correction fluid pens. So shake and squeeze is what this says. And see this big, big part here that your your fingers go on. You do need to clean this this metal nib. It'll get kind of built up, but shake and squeeze until you get it flowing, and then we'll go ahead and do my test marks here. So you, the more you squeeze, this one I'm squeezing a lot, the more comes out. If you don't squeeze, you can just apply the paint or the correction fluid like that. That's pretty good coverage. I'm going to see what these lines look like on the gesso. That's with just a little, a little squeeze to get it flowing. And then I'll go ahead and do it here on, on this collage so you can see. You get a really nice opaque coverage, uh, kind of a thick line, depending on how much you're pressing uh, this little, little thing. So that's the big whiteout. What I've been using lately is another whiteout correction fluid um, by Presto. Jumbo correction pen, shake it up. Make sure you have the tip cleaned off a little bit. Test it. You do squeeze this one as well to control the flow. A little bit smaller, uh, kind of more controllable nib than the other one. And then I'll do some lines here on the gesso. And on the collage. So that is the Presto Jumbo Correction Pen. Um, this is 
opaque paint marker, painter's brand, um, made by Elmer's. I haven't used this one in a while, so I'm shaking it up. We'll see if we can get it primed. It's got a very large nib. Okay, and so this is this is a bigger nib. And you notice some of these are very kind of wet looking when they go down. And you can look back at some of these and see that the the moisture is kind of soaked into um, that card stock. So we'll do the lines here on the gesso. Okay. And we'll do some, some mark making here. All right, so that's Painter's Brand. I think I got that at Walmart. Uh, and it's a, a thick paint marker. All right, let's move on to some, um, some pencils. So got a few different pencil, white pencils here. This is, this is my favorite. It's the Stabilo All. And so you can make your marks and Um, but this is also water soluble. So let me get a little, a little bit of water on a brush and I'll show you what this, this will do when it's activated. So it's almost, almost watercolory. Let me do a, a bigger swatch and then apply some water. So you could do that for some shading or something like that. Um, of course, we'll wait and see what it looks like when it's dry. But this is the Stabilo All white pencil, water soluble. And I'll go ahead and make some marks here on the gesso and on my collage. Okay, so that's just kind of a, a nice to play with kind of pencil. This is a charcoal pencil. So this is gonna go down and feel a little bit different. Uh, it's definitely got some grip. It grips onto the paper. Uh, it makes it easier to control. Get some nice clean lines. Obviously it's a pencil so it can be sharpened. We can color it in, and because it's charcoal, we can also smudge it a little bit. And so I'll go ahead and put this in on the gesso. Okay, and over here. So this isn't going very well. This is a shiny magazine page, so let's go on something that's a little bit more porous. It goes really well onto a porous paper, it holds onto it. That's a charcoal pencil. This is uh, a white, I have no idea, some kind of a white colored pencil. Um, it has more of a crayon-like feel. When I when I put it down, you can tell, um, you know, it feels like it's kind of waxy, like a crayon would be. So it'd be good for Coloring in some spots. Go ahead and make some marks here. And you can just tell the, you know, kind of the different color whites that you get when you put these white uh, marks onto, onto your collage or onto that black gesso. So what else have I got here? Uh, the Stabilo Woody 3-in-1, uh, again, is water-soluble, kind of a pencil crayon. Goes down very smooth, very, very much like a crayon. Dots. We'll color that one in. And again, this one is water-soluble. So if I just go in here with a little bit of water, I can move that around. almost like white paint. 
nice for shadows, shading. Um, go ahead and put this in the swatch book. And the other thing we can do with this is we can dip it directly in the water uh, and make our marks. And that's going to give you a different effect as well. And so let's go ahead and do this on the collage. Okay. That's the Stabilo Woody 3-in-1. I've um, got some pastels here. It's a semi-hard pastel uh, white. And this, I believe, is um, Prismacolor Pastel. I feel like this is a good example of um, a higher priced brand name versus a lower priced, probably student grade pastel. Um, it just goes down uh, a lot smoother. So I'm going to go ahead and make my swatch marks here with the pastel. Um, like I said Prismacolor pastels. So these. This would be really, really nice for some coverage on the collage example there. All right, now we're getting into uh, more writing kinds of pens. Uh, I'm going to start with my favorite, okay? This is the Uniball Signo, and it is, oh, it's pretty fabulous as far as, as far as writing in white. There's my marks, some dots. I'm coloring in. Um, nice opaque coverage, easy to control. Uh, unlike the paint pens, this doesn't need to be primed. Uh, it just gives a very nice smooth line and goes over the gesso smoothly and it's going to go over all these different kinds of collage papers. See that? This is shiny magazine paper, painted paper, scrapbook paper. Uh, this one goes smoothly over all of them. So that's probably why that's one of my favorites. Other people like jelly rolls. And these are, these are old, you guys, because I got them and I really hated them. So I'm not even sure if they still work. Um, this one doesn't appear to be doing anything. Okay, let's see. I've got another one here. That one's going in the trash. This is a five millimeter. And again, these are dried up, guys. So I can't honestly say just that I bought these a couple years ago and did not like them nearly as much as I like the Signo uh, Uniball pen. So if you like jelly rolls, let me know. Um, found this at Walmart when I was just buying office supplies. It's a new Inkjoy gel pen by Papermate and comes in white. So I figured we'd test that out. Because these are, you know, Office supplies are almost always cheaper than art supplies, right? This is not, not bad. Uh, it doesn't feel as thick as the uh, Uniball Signo, but it could, could work for some thinner lines. And we'll go ahead and do uh, in the swatch book as well on the black gesso. So that's a nice line. Um, I'm going to see if it has the same kind of coverage over these different papers as the Uniball. Fairly decent. It fades in a little bit more than the other pen, but that's that's a good economy option. Uh, and then we've got black ink, or white ink, I'm sorry, white ink. Uh, this is just Reflections Archival Pigment, Pigment Ink, and so I'm going to um, do some stamping with it and let's try to 
a different stamp. This one's kind of fun. So that's kind of kind of cool. Let's do this one because it's got a little bit thicker stamp. So you do see there's um, a little bit of bleed around the edges of these, but for a white on black kind of thing, we'll put that in the swatch book as well. So I remember that I did that. And then one other I wanted to share is uh, the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India ink in white. Uh, so you can get this with a, a stopper or you can just get the, the ink in little bottles. I'm going to shake it up good and I'm just going to put some ink on with a Q-tip. This could be put on with a brush or um, or even, oh, how about a skewer, a wooden skewer. See how that works for, for some line work. And that's kind of cool. Um, so that is Dr. P.H. Martin's uh, White India Ink. Go ahead and do a few on the black gesso here. And I'm going to go ahead and see how it works on the collage papers as well. I think the, the more the merrier. Um, if you don't get enough on it, it does tend to evaporate to not have uh, as opaque of a coverage. But that's India ink, so that's always a good option as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little experiment looking at um, some different tools for making white marks. Again, I'm going to tell you my very favorites um, are the Uniball Signo, and lately one of my favorites is the Presto Jumbo Correction Fluid. Uh, I find both of those really helpful, uh, not just on black, but on collages uh, that have mixed media, that have paint, that have glossy papers, different textures. Both of those perform really well for me. So I'd be really curious to hear what your favorite white mark making tools might be uh, because I'm always on the lookout for the next great thing. Thanks for joining me today. Please like and uh, this video and subscribe to Collage Lab's YouTube channel. I've got a lot more planned out and going to really ramp this up over the coming weeks and months. And I would love to take you along for the ride. More information is at collage-lab.com. I've got free classes. I've got Zoom classes. I've got monthly play dates. I've got a membership program. Uh, check it all out in the comments. And all of these supplies that I tested today, uh, I've got links to in the comments or just go to my Amazon storefront and you can do your own shopping comparison there. Thanks again for joining me. Have a great day.